Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen showdown for you. We're going to take a look at this. This is the Twisby VAC 700R. This is in the iris pattern. And compare it against this one. This is the Pilot Custom 823. It's got a 14 karat gold nib. Join me now down on the mat. We'll take a look at the pens. We'll do a writing sample. Then I'll give you my thoughts about them. Welcome down to the mat. Here's today's two pens. We've got the Twisby VAC 700R. This is in this glorious iris pattern. I really like the pattern of this. And then we've also got the Pilot Custom 823 in the transparent brown color. Both the pens don't look different. The only thing that's really tying them together, they are both vacuum fillers. Let's take a quick look through the bodies. So we'll start with the Twisby. So at the top, got the Twisby logo and we come down into the cap. The cap it tapers out until it gets about halfway down and then it set, straightens out down to this ring at the bottom. The ring here we've got VAC 700R Taiwan and then we've got Twisby and then we're back to that VAC 700R. I really like the colours of this. We've got there we've got this brassy goldy colour We've got some blue, we've got some pink, and then it comes back round. We've got back to that goldy colour. I've seen a number of these where there's a lot of green in it. I would have loved that because, as you may already know, green's my favourite colour, but it's still an attractive pen. So we've talked about the cap. We've also got this clip. So the clip, again, is still in that iris pattern, that flame burnt pattern. Here we've got, again, pinks, purples, and some nice blues. Then even going around the top of that clip, we've got that pink colour with the blue border. As we come down the cap, just without knocking the other pen over, we've got the band. Then there doesn't seem to be that much of a drop down to the body. I yes, I can feel something there, but it feels like only one or two millimetres, so it's, it's fairly nice. We can then see the transparent body. I love these transparent bodies. I love the demonstrator models. It's so nice to be able to see the workings. Now, I know there's not a lot of ink in here at the moment, but in here we can actually see really well how this mechanism works. So we've got the plunger there at the bottom. At the moment, I've got the cap sealed down. So that's sitting off the section from the body. But you can see here where the bottom... I would say maybe half a centimetre to a centimetre is wider than the rest of the body. And this is because as we trigger the mechanism, we push down the plunger until we get to about here, which is where it widens out. And what's happening is as we're pushing that plunger down, behind the plunger here, we're creating a vacuum. When we get down to the bottom where it widens out, as the plunger goes down, it opens up, it frees that vacuum, so the vacuum then sucks the ink through and into the body. Now, one of the things I've noticed with all my vacuum pens, I do struggle to get a full fill. I know you can mess around with it. It would be nice when you do one plunger to get a full fill, but I generally find I only get about half the body full of ink. For me, yes, it's nice to have had a full fill. So for me, by only getting this half fill, I'm able to use a lot more inks. So the body, on the outside, it feels like it's gently tapering down all the way. And then we get another of the flame effect bands. And then we get this cap here. So this is a blind cap. This is a, what works a mechanism. I've got it closed at the moment. I'm going to open it. And I don't know if you see all that. Let me just close it again. As I open it, watch down here at the bottom of the plunger. So that's slowly coming out as I open this up. And that's then allowing the ink to go from the body and into the section. I'm going to leave this open. This is one of the issues that I find that I have, again with all vacuum fillers, is I keep forgetting to open up this blind cap here, which means that the body and the section are separated off. So 
that's why I tend to, if I'm in the house, leave it open all the time. Let's take a look at the body here of the Pilot. So a different shaped body, isn't it? We've got these blunt ends here on the Twisby, where this, it's more like, I've heard it described as a cigar. I, I don't know, maybe a torpedo. But we've got this nice curved ends. So at the top here, we've got this curved top. It's in this gorgeous brown material. I like the brown of this. It looks so classy to me. We come down and then the cap. Again, it's tapering out. To me, it tapers out till it gets to the bottom of the clip. And then we go straight all the way down. We've got another band here. On there, we've got three stars. Custom 823. Another three stars. Then we've got Pilot made in Japan. And we're back to the three stars. The clip. So again, we've got the gold colored clip band. The clip, we've got Pilot at the top. That comes down to a ball at the bottom. Very different in design from what we see on the Twisby. On the Twisby, we've got that flame effect and it actually seems to taper out as it goes down. Whereas here we're going down to the ball. Both the clips are nice and functional. They're nice and springy. I will be honest, I don't actually use the clips because I never really put them in shirt pockets. But they're there if you want them. So let's continue with the custom 823 so the cap we've got a noticeable drop down from the cap to the body compared to the twisby where you can hardly feel it here it's there you can really feel that drop we come down into the body it looks like it's the same width all the way down we get near the end then we've got a little sharp taper to a gold colored band and again we've got that blind cap i'm just going to slightly open this up I know we've got next to no ink in here again, but just so you can see it working, watch the bottom of the plunger as I open this up. So there's the plunger coming out. Just tighten that up. Then at the top of this blind cap, we've got that domed end again. Very different looking pens, but they both use the same filling mechanism. Now we're going to take a look at the major difference between the two of them. Let's take the caps off. So with the Twisby, that's half, that's one, one and a half, about one and three quarter turns to take that off. We'll leave that there and we'll take off this one. So with the Pilot, it goes half, one, one and a half, again, one and three quarter, similar number of turns. But that reveals two very different nibs. Just to put them next to each other. In the Twisby, we've got a steel nib and it's a number six size nib. In the Pilot, we've got a gold nib. This is 14 karat gold and this is a Pilot sized nib and that's a number 15. So the nibs, this is the business end of the pen. This is where they're different and this is where the writing experience comes in different as well, which we'll take a look at shortly. From the nibs, we come into the sections. On the Twisby, at the top of the nib, we've got that flame effect. Then in the section, we've got some of that flame effect again. And then it goes into a transparent section, so you can actually see the ink in there. With the Pilot, it goes straight from the nib into this brown section. So again, very different looking. Each pen is unique in the way it looks. We'll talk about the way I feel about the looks later on in the video when I do my scarring. So that's the business part. Let's do some measurements now. So we'll swap out and we'll come back and I'll fetch in the rule. So here we are with the rule of measurement. For these, I've closed that blind cap again. So we'll start with the Twisby. So in terms of length, that's 14.7 centimeters. Let's take the cap off. Uncapped is 13.2 centimeters. Posted. Posts are really nice, nice and solid, although not too hard on there. And it posts here onto the top of this. I've got to be honest, I never use this posted anyway, but at least you know you can pop that cap on there, even if it wobbles a bit. So posted, that comes in at 17.2 centimetres. 
step that out of the way let's fetch in the pilot so here we are with the cap on that comes in at 14.8 centimeters just ever so slightly longer uncapped that comes in at 13.07 centimeters posted this one posts a lot nicer it's a lot firmer posted that comes in at 16.3 centimeters so noticeably shorter as i say though i'd never really bother with these posted so it doesn't really matter to me widths let's fetch in both pens widths so with the twist beat is 1.34 centimeters with the pilot is 1.25 the caps the twist beat is 1.4 five centimeters whereas the pilot is 1.49 centimeters and then with the sections with the twisby we go from 1.01 up to 1.08 centimeters and with this pilot that goes from 1.06 up to 1.13 centimeters so they're very much similar in size in terms of widths let's clear this off and we'll do some weights so here we are with the scales of weighing. Let's start with the Twisby. So here we have with the full body and cap on 36 grams. The body 22 grams and the cap 12 grams. With the pilot 29 grams. So it is noticeably lighter in terms of the weight. Body 20 grams and the cap 10 grams. Let's clear this off and we'll fetch in the notepad. So here we are with the notepad of testing. This is a black and red notepad. It's A5 in size and it uses the Oxford optic paper. We'll start with the Twisby. So this is the Twisby. VAC 700R. It's got a broad nib and it's a steel nib. In terms of cost, this was 130 Australian dollars. The ink in here is by Pelican and it's Edelstein Garnet. Nice coloured ink in here and I think it's a nice match for the pen. I love, not so much now because there's not a lot of ink in there, but I love it when you can actually see that ink sloshing around. As I said earlier, that's one of the reasons I like the demonstrators. Drying times, immediate, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. So after a minute, that's still slightly wet, we're still smudging. Now we've got to bear in mind, temperature can affect it. So here, I'm going to say it's cold, it's 13 degrees. You know, some people might say, well, that's quite nice. That's degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And I do find that the temperature sometimes can affect the way that the pens dry. Let's write a sentence. To do this, I'm going to move the mic so you can hear it writing. That's a nice experience. It feels stiff. So you can definitely feel this a, a little bit of, I want to call it tension there between your hand and the actual pen. It's nice and smooth though. There's not a lot of gratiness. Yes, you can hear it writing, but I like that. I like a little bit of feedback on these. Let's look at line variation. So this is with no pressure. This is with some pressure. A little bit wider, but I wonder sometimes if it's just because by adding the pressure, it puts out more ink. Let's do some S's anyway. So not a lot of in the way of line variation. Didn't really expect it though. It's a steel nib after all. I'll do my scribble test just to see how the flow keeps up. Yep, yeah, no issues with the flow. That's nice. You can hear the feedback still. You can feel it on the paper. Nice experience though.
just going to reposition the paper there we go now we're going to do our test with the pilot custom 823 so again i've made sure that blind caps open so we have here a pilot custom 823 this is 14 carat gold and it's a broad nib in terms of cost there's a big difference in cost there because this was 394 australian dollars three back 700 hours for the same price as one custom 823 the ink i've got in here is by robert oster and it's called Café Crema. I'm getting loads and loads of shading with this ink. I don't see as much as that with that garnet. We'll take another look in a second though. Drying times, immediate. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. Again, we've still got some wetness there after a minute, but there's more than what I saw with the twist bee. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do two minutes. I'll just do it here on the line above. Two minutes, yep, that's now nice and dry. As I said with the other ink though, bear in mind, it's what I would call cold here at the moment, but there are also different inks. Again, bear that in mind because different inks do behave differently. Let's move the mic down to the paper and do some writing. In terms of what I hear, that sounds very similar to what I hear when I'm writing with the Twisby. But in terms of the feel of the pen on the paper, this is a lot softer. There's a lot, I don't want to call it a bounce, but it feels like there's a little bit more given that. It's a gold nib, so you'd expect that. What I'm going to call out is this gorgeous shading. As I say, we'll take a look against the other ink in a minute. But I just love this. This is, to me what makes this pen what makes this writing experience again different inks so they do perform differently but just look at this there's so much shading and that's what for my mind fetches character to my writing and to me the character that's what i'm after let's move this slightly we'll do our final couple of tests so line variation this is with no pressure this is with pressure you can see how that softness is allowing me to get a wider line again it could be similar to what i said with the twisby it's just it's putting down more ring but i do i think that's ever so slightly wider let me do some s's again just look at the way we're getting that shading on there that's so nice to look at final test the flow again keeps up ever so nicely i'm just going to reposition the paper so we can see a bit from each of the pens there we go hopefully we've got the name no let's go a little bit further down shall we there we go so we've got the name and we've got that little tiny bit of the sentence oh it's really squashed in there at the bottom isn't it let me pop the two pens back on so what are my thoughts on these i enjoy them both i enjoy using them both they're very different writing experiences the only real thing that keeps these together is the filling mechanism because they're vacuum fillers i love the nature of this it's clear it's transparent i can see everything that's going on i can see that gorgeous ink in there yeah i can see the color there like a to me i would say it's like a burnt orange type color when i'm seeing it I like this flame effect. I like the iris effect. I would have liked to have seen more green in this, 
but that's just my personal preference. You know, as I said earlier, I like green. With the 823, again, yes, we've got some transparency in there, but you can't really see the ink sloshing around because there's very little ink left in here. Oh, there we go, managed to get a little bit. The problem with it being brown though is it does distort the colour of the ink. So when I'm looking at this, I know it's a brown ink in there, but it looks nearly black. And that's the problem with a lot of the inks in here. You can't really see the true colour. I like the look of, again, classic look. You know, that does count for something. That This pen, this Pilot, you could pull out anywhere. With the Twisby, you might get some funny looks or some questions about it. Depends what you want to use it for. Are you going there just to be taking notes? Or do you want to use it as a bit of a conversation starter? Let's give these some scores though. The first we're going to go for is pen looks. As I say, I like them both. I think though, with the Pilot looking a little bit of more of a classic pen, I think that does edge it out over the Twisby. In terms of looks, what I'm going to do is give the Twisby 8 out of 10, and I'm going to give the Pilot 9 out of 10. Writing experience. Let me just move this up just so we can see the sentences now. Very different writing experience. Yes, they sounded the same, but I was finding that this bit more spring, a bit more bounce with the Pilot because of that gold nib. Look at the shading. To me, again, this makes a big difference. Yes, they're different inks, they perform differently. If I was to make this a true test, you know, I'd have the same ink in both, but I'd find that boring because that means I'm writing with the same color all the time. I love the shading. To me, the character that this shading is fetching beats out what I see with this garnet ink here in the Twisby. So in terms of writing experience, I'm going to give the Twisby eight out of 10. Let's fetch that down so we can actually see it. There we go, eight out of 10 for the Twisby and nine out of 10 for the Pilot. Ink flow, both really well. No issues with the ink flow, no issues with any hard starts and no skipping. Had no issues with things like burping. Both really well. I'm gonna give them both an eight out of 10. The interesting question, value for money. As I said earlier, I could buy three Twisby VAC 700Rs for the price of one Pilot Custom 823. That's a big saving. But a writing experience, the feel in the hand, I think this Pilot 823 is really, really nice. The Twisby, it's all right. It works well, does what it should. It lets me get ideas out of my head and onto paper. In terms of value for money, bearing in mind the price difference, I'm going to give these both the same score because, you know, the writing experience, the way it feels, makes a big difference for this custom 823. I'm going to give them both 8 out of 10. So that means my total scores for the Twisby VAC 700R in Iris with that steel nib, that gets 8 out of 10. For the Pilot 823 in transparent brown with that 14 karat gold nib, that comes out with 8.75 out of 10. And I've got to be honest, as long as money was unlimited, I would go for the Pilot every day. And when I'm doing my daily writing, if I need to pick a pen up quickly, although these are virtually next door to each other in my pen case, I tend to navigate towards the Pilot. So this is my fountain pen showdown of the Twisby VAC 700R and the Pilot Custom 823. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on these pens? How would you rank them? What differences would you use in your scoring? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment. Well, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.